No, it's not a distant strat uh, tragedy. It is a catastrophe happening in real time, on our watch, challenging the very essence of our humanity. And we cannot turn away. We cannot remain silent. And we must not fail to act. <coughs> the eyes of history are upon us. And the voices of Gaza's suffering people echo in this very chamber, asking us one simple question. If not the Security Council, who? If not now, when? Mr. President, today, 96% of Palestinian children and women face food and security in Gaza. The images of Palestinian children queuing to get something to eat or eating three leaves should question our humanity and push us to act. The world watches. History judges. Let our voices thunder and that our deed resound. No one more day shall pass with starvation used as a tool of war in Gaza. No one more day. And meanwhile, our council is still discussing the number of trucks entering in Gaza, debating the obstacle deliberately put by the occupying power. Today, we face again challenges related to access and distribution of food. But what are the result of a deliberate Israeli policy? According to OCHA, during the first two weeks of July, only 86 trucks entered Gaza per day. This is clearly below the level required. This is clearly below the 500 trucks entering Gaza every day last year. Due to the lack of order and security, Humanitarian actors are facing enormous challenge into delivering aid within Gaza to the civilian Palestinian population. And we are talking about human beings. We are talking about lives. We are talking about children who have their own dreams Dreams now destroyed by the barbaric Israeli occupying power. Let us be clear. We refute any attempt to absolve the occupying power or shift the responsibility for this disaster to the UN or to the humanitarian actors. The responsibility should be shouldered by the occupying power, which now targets blue helmets, which now target UNRWA. Yes, targeting and handcuffing UNRWA 
the only humanitarian agency to capably distribute aid is also another part of Israeli policy. And any attempt to discredit UNRWA undermines the principle of international cooperation and solidarity and should be opposed by the Security Council. Furthermore, the World Health Organization report of July 16, last week, is very alarming. Polio virus <coughs> lurks in Gaza sewage, another silent threat poised to explode. This deadly virus now stalks a population already brought to its knees. Their health system is demolished. In the rubble of hospitals and clinics, a new epidemic looms. This is not just a crisis. This is an absolute catastrophe. We cannot ignore the WHO warnings about disease outbreaks among displaced population. Overcrowding, poor hygiene, and lack of water and sanitation in shelters create breeding ground for hepatitis A and other epidemics. These preventable diseases will claim more lives due to shortage of essential medical equipment, medical equipment and justly restricted under dual use pretext. Urgent action is needed to address these critical health risks. Israeli brutal tactics are nothing short of collective punishment collective punishment, a heinous war crime. As the occupying force, Israel bears full responsibility for the immense suffering and countless innocent Palestinian lives lost. This reign of terror must end. The world cannot longer stand silent in the face of such unspeakable cruelty. Mr. President, to address the dire humanitarian situation, Algeria calls for the following action to be taken. First, opening opening all crossing borders, including Rafah. And it should be operated exclusively by Egypt and the Palestinian Authority. Second, implementing Resolution 2720 by deploying monitors in Rafah to ensure the smooth access of humanitarian aid. Third, enabling UNRWA and other humanitarian actors to distribute humanitarian aid throughout the Gaza Strip, including the north of the territory. Fourth, launching a massive vaccination campaign by WHO 
to prevent the spread of polio among children. Children are innocent lives that should be protected by everyone. Fifth, ceasefire. Yes, without a ceasefire, all the above measures will be useless. Only a ceasefire in Gaza will allow for effective humanitarian action. Colleagues, the wounds inflicted on Gaza today will scar the world for generations to come. Our children, the future leaders, the future thinkers and citizens of the globe are watching us with eyes wide open. They see how we respond to the crisis of Palestinian children, to the tears of mothers, to the anguish of people pushed to the brink of existence. Our actions shape their understanding of justice, of compassion, and the value of human life. In this critical moment, the advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice stands as a beacon of hope and a step towards a sustainable solution of the crisis in the Middle East. The ICG's crystal clear ruling declared Israel occupation illegal, illegal, and the settlement activities of a violation of the international law. Those who believe in the international order should work to implement this judgment. It's not only a legal document, it is a moral compass pointing us toward a world where international law protects the vulnerable and hold the powerful to account. But make no mistake, if we fail, if we fail to heed this call, if we allow the suffering in Gaza to continue, we are planting seeds of bitterness and despair that will bear terrible, terrible fruits. The only path to end this horrific tragedy is crystal clear. As President Abdelmajid Taboun boldly proclaims, we must secure the Palestinian people's inalienable right to their own independent state with Al-Quds Sharif as its rightful capital. It is a moral imperative, a historic debt that humanity must urgently repay. The price of our failure <coughs> will be paid not just in geopolitics, but also in human lives and shattered dreams. Let's work. Let's work together to establish a Palestinian state with Al-Quds Sharif as its capital. This is the only path to peace and stability in the Middle East. I thank you. I thank Algeria for their statement.